Hello everyone, welcome to my messy studio. My name is Mark, and I'm an artist and an art professor who uses fountain pens for drawing. And in this video, we're going to be looking at a very unique flexible pen grind called an Aeroflex that is capable of putting down consistent lines like this, but is also capable of doing this. Impressive, right? We're going to look at this nib closely take it through my series of tests, draw with it extensively, and determine whether this might be a useful tool for those of us that use our pens for making art. Let's get started. If you're familiar with my channel, even slightly, you know that I love drawing in pen and ink, especially with fountain pens, and specifically with fountain pens that have flexible nibs that allow you to make thick and thin lines, since line variation makes your drawings more expressive and gives you the ability to emphasize depth, light direction, and texture. Early in my fountain pen addiction, I was obsessed with flex, thirsting over vintage pens that were completely out of my price range, and seeking inexpensive ways to add additional flex to pens that were not as flexible as I'd like them to be. After several years of obsessive collecting, though many of those super flexy vintage pens are still completely out of reach, I've managed to acquire flexible pens of just about every kind, from those that are called soft, which provide just a nibble of line variation, all the way to what is referred to in the fountain pen community as wet noodles, pens that go from extra fine to 2.5 millimeters. I love my flexiest flex pens, the ones that produce super juicy lines with ease, and then snap back to a fine point like nothing ever happened. But how much line variation do I really need for drawing? For the traditional pen and ink drawing I do, the answer actually is not all that much. In most cases, a semi-flex pen will do just fine. However, for one young, enterprising Aero Astro Engineering student named Oritro Latif, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that name close to right, the answer to the question of how much flex you need is absolutely all of it. As a hobbyist calligrapher, he started tinkering with his fountain pen nibs, learning to grind stubs, architects, and needlepoints before turning his engineering mind to flex nibs. On his YouTube channel called Flex Pyramids, he's documented his journey into the fascinating and frustrating world of flex. And, through the innovative use of cutouts and various types of overfeeds, Aritro has managed to create nibs with line variation beyond anyone's imagination and, frankly, anyone's idea what to do. As someone absolutely fascinated by Flex for the sake of Flex, I've been watching the developments on his channel with great interest when, lo and behold, he sent me an email asking if I'd be willing to try one of his nibs. I immediately said yes, and an exchange of emails followed where he asked me what kind of unflexed line I usually draw with how much flex I would like, and how much ink flow I would like the nib to have. And then, a few weeks later, the nib arrived in a number 6 Yovo housing unit. Here is the Aero Flex. Admittedly, it's a rather rough build, but believe me, it's considerably cleaner than many of the previous efforts, and each generation of these nibs have become cleaner and cleaner. Aritro uses inexpensive number 6 Jinhao nibs for his custom grinds, and fits them into Yovo housing with a specially modded feed. Before we dissect the innards of the Aeroflex, let's just look again at what it's capable of. It can produce a very fine line, almost an extra fine, and does so very smoothly and consistently. But it can also do this, put down a line that is a whopping 5 millimeters. As far as I know, no other flex pen can come even close to this kind of performance. And I can continue putting down 5 millimeter lines continuously, almost without railroading. And I believe the railroading has less to do with the pen and more with the nature of the fountain pen ink, which is not great at retaining surface tension. If I was using regular shellac based drawing ink, which can't be put in fountain pens unfortunately, I could probably push the snib even more. The overfeed is made of a fine metal mesh material and is attached by a large cutout in the center of the nib that ingeniously serves two purposes, to add flexibility to the tines and to secure the overfeed. And the mesh material seems to be the perfect choice since its permeability helps regulate the control of ink and keeps the pen wet and ready to write without shaking or priming. As you can see, the center cutout is rough looking, done with a Dremel tool. But as I mentioned, Aridro has already made great strides in making the cuts cleaner and I'm sure will continue refining the process. As for the feed, it looks like it was modified with an extra wide ink channel. On the surface, the modifications done here look fairly simple and crude, but I can tell you that the fine tuning it takes to get a nib to work this well is no simple feat. Let's take this nib through my usual tests and see how it performs. I'm using Windsor & Newton Bristol paper for these tests and an Opus 88 Jazz fountain pen filled with Noodler's Black. In the consistency test, this pen puts down a fine line without skipping in every direction, and for a pen with this tremendous flexibility and fineness of tines, it's not all that hard to maintain an unflexed line. 
Furthermore, some flexi pens will splatter once you speed up, and this one doesn't, which is just amazing. In the line variation test, well, we already know about the line variation test. This pen goes from an extra fine line to 5mm and beyond sometimes without a problem. But best of all, the snapback is excellent. This can be a problem with many flex nibs, which often have decent flex but feel squishy, meaning that they are slow to come back to the unflexed position. Here the pen returns to normal very quickly. Furthermore, due to the excellent function of the feed, the pen only railroads in extreme conditions, when fully flexed and at speed. And unlike many other flex pens, this pen will start right up only after a few seconds. And in the flex cube, well, the lines are so wet I messed it all up. We'll discuss the wetness of the lines once we get to the flow test. In the feedback test, the pen performed very well, again, especially since this is a pen with incredibly delicate tines. In many very delicate flexible dip pen nibs, you have to be quite careful with fast scribbles since the tines can cross and then, when they shoot back to their original position, will splash ink everywhere. This pen somehow manages not to do that. And in the wetness test is where we run into problems. Unflex, the line writes moderately wet, nothing crazy, but on the wetter side. But flexed? To say that this pen writes wet is an understatement. This pen is an absolute hose, not an uncontrolled hose, but a precise hose, putting down sharp puddles of ink that, if smeared, could cover the entire sheet of paper and take hours and hours to dry. This is something Aritro says he's working on, and I've already seen him doing experience with a pen that puts down an equal amount of line variation, but writes much drier. Now let's do a drawing with this pen, and as I draw, I'll give my thoughts on this nib and its potential as a drawing instrument. Consistent with my previous tests, this pen performs perfectly, being fine and smooth unflexed, and putting down super juicy flex lines where they're needed. And while this definitely is not a pen for beginning artists, it's not nearly as hard to control as some of my super flexible dip nibs, such as the Browse Rose. You do have to be careful with the wetness and wait for layers of hatching to dry before putting down another layer. You can see in some places I was a little impatient and put down a layer over lines that were still wet and created puddles of ink that look a touch splotchy. The main issue is, for traditional artists like myself, is that this pen is such an outlier in terms of performance that it's really no longer a flex pen. What Aritro has done goes beyond flex. He's actually created a new category of drawing instrument. And, as with any new tool, it's hard to know what to do with it, how to fully exploit its potential in terms of technique and style. For my usual way of working, which uses fine overlapping layers of hatching and slight line variation, this pen is certainly not suitable. But I find it super fun to use for shorter line drawings with exaggerated calligraphic line variation that sort of mimics woodcuts or linoleum cuts. Bold printmaking techniques where the spaces around the lines have to be painstakingly carved away. While I do wish this pen wouldn't put down such super wet lines, I imagine that Aritro will eventually find a way to resolve this issue, and I think the results in this drawing demonstrate the pen's potential, and I look forward to doing further drawings with it, and with time and practice, arrive at a way of working that will fully exploit this pen's potential. So kudos to Aritro for getting so many things right in this nib. Anyone can make a nib flexible, but he made this nib not only ridiculously flexible, but also clean and controllable. There's absolutely no dripping, burping, even when you move the pen quickly. For a pen this flexible that writes this wet, I think that's remarkable. The wetness of the lines does mean that you have to use good quality paper and an ink that resists feathering, and then be quite careful in the way you put down your lines. It also means the snip is best used in a pen with a large ink reservoir, such as the Opus 88 Jazz Demonstrator I'm using in this demo. I think this Aeroflex nib has tremendous potential for artists and calligraphers, and I plan to continue following Aritro's flex experiments with great interest. If you'd like to as well, you can subscribe to his YouTube channel or follow him on Instagram, where his moniker is Cactus Nib Experiments, where he plans to make some of his nibs available for sale. I hope all of you enjoyed this video on what I think is an exciting development in the wet and wild world of fountain pen flex. While my personal drawing style is traditional, I'm a huge lover of exploring the visual possibilities of strange nibs. Foodie nibs, Concord nibs, modified pilot parallel nibs, as a way of expanding my horizons and growing as an artist. Thank you, Aritro, for sending me this very fun nib and letting me try it, and thank you, my dear viewer, for watching this video, which was super fun to make. Bye for now, and I hope to see you back here in my very messy studio very soon.